Welcome to our second tutorial. In the second tutorial we are going to build up our first own simulation model by importing uh, 3D data and we are going to define some kinematics, what means uh, drives for the axis for this 3D model. In our first tutorial I have shown you how to install Real Virtual and how to navigate in the scene and in the game view. We have taken a closer look into this demonstration model and I explained some basic concepts of Real Virtual I.O. Now we are going to build our first model. Down here we are having our project section. There you can see the structure of the folders within your project as well as the assets. So Real Virtual is uh, sitting in this folder Game for Automation. So everything what Real Virtual is providing as a function is included in here, including this demonstration model. We are now going to create a new scene and let's uh, make a new folder. So let's call it tutorial number two and there's nothing in and I'm creating a new scene which means a demonstration or a simulation model so you can have as much simulation models or scenes within a project as you would like. So I'm creating a new scene and there's a template for real virtual by pushing on create. No, I don't want to save the demonstration model. I'm having a new scene or model. That's not yet saved, so for saving it to a location I need to select File, Save As and I'm going to save it here in my Tutorial to folder. Within this uh, scene, new created scene, there's not much in. We are just having the standard UI for game mode, a base plate, uh, we can navigate with the mouse uh, and uh, we are having some standard lights and the standard camera. So everything which is standard is automatically included in here in this game for automation component. For example, you can change a lot of settings, general settings in here. If you click on Game for Automation, for example, what I would uh, like to do, I'm here creating a bigger base plate. That's the dimension in meters. So let's make a somehow 50 meters base plate. I'm going to download our demonstration component. It's a portal, a gantry crane here from 3dfinded.com. You can register here and you have got access to a lot of industrial components. So from Lucas Franz, uh, I'm taking this component and I'm downloading it uh, to my computer. First you need to register and I will get it as a Koyada file, which should be here somewhere here. And let's get it to my computer. First thing I would like to do, I want to place the Koyada file I've imported before from 3D Find It into my tutorial folder here in the project structure. So I'm just dragging the file in here. It's ending with DIE and that's the, you see it already here in a preview, that's this thing I've downloaded from 3D Find It. I can now just drag and drop it into my scene, but you will see, oh, it's a very big, it's very large, and that's because my Koyada file is uh, scaled in millimeters, whereas the standard scale or the standard one unit in inside unit is one meter. So we need to put here CSC one and press apply. And now our component is in the scale we would like to have it. And with this overlay window, you've got always here the most important functions. You could also do it here. 
uh, with the rotation function or you could change the rotation here on the transform but easiest way is we are just rotating it here so that it's sitting on the bottom and let's rotate it here so it's now sitting in the middle okay I'm saving this scene uh, if you are now pushing on play um, you will see nothing will happen because it's still a static component it might take some seconds and you see we are having in here our component still with very flat colors so there are no special materials assigned to it these are just the flat colors which have been part of the Koyada file. But let's keep it for the moment like that. But now I would like to get a movement into this system. So let's first check this prefab here. I can open it and you go get here the full assembly structure. And for example, by turning it off and on, you can see that's the thing which is moving to the left and right whereas this is uh, moving up and down and the structure is not kinematically oriented so far what means that this component is not sitting underneath of this one it's just in parallel and for being able to change the structure in here I'm first cutting the connection to the prefab so I unpack it completely now I'm able to change the structure so I'm putting this underneath of this one. So with the goal that if this one is moving here, all the rest is moving also with it. So that the, let's call it like the unity direction that our set axis moving to left and right is including the Y axis moving up and down. That's only one possibility to change the structure with inside, uh, within the design uh, hierarchy. So I, by this at the end, I, I changed the design hierarchy. In the further upcoming tutorials, you will learn how you could also generate your own parallel kinematic structure without changing anything in the design structure what makes uh, updating the design after you already changed something in unity much easier but for the moment that's the easiest we are changing it directly here so what i would like now is to do to add some drives so first we'll take this um, set axis moving to the left and right and let's add here a drive by just putting here pushing here drive so this will add down here a drive component and you will see a drive icon uh, which is shown here another way i'm just removing it by remove component is also to add here drive if you know like it's called you're getting the same result the drive is added or a third way for for doing it i'm removing it again is in our main menu we can add the component of a drive. So three ways for doing it. In the overlay window, in the, with add component in the inspector and by the main menu. Usually I'm using the overlay window here. And as you can see, the overlay window, window is context sensitive because there's already now a drive added to. I don't have the ability anymore to add a second drive because, because on each level I need one drive. But I need to add the drive to my other component which should move up and down. So here I'm also adding a drive. For the drives, you see here this, this uh, this arrows uh, pointing into the direction so this should move to the left and right and i can change the direction in here by selecting the direction or i can just select select the arrows here and if i want to reverse the direction i can reverse it like that so now the 
this direction which is shown here to the right is our positive direction. And for the other drive, let's make this downwards as the positive direction. So we are having these two drives and what I usually do for just testing it, I can add a so-called behavior script for it, so which is controlling the drive. And especially for testing, we are having this drive erratic position, which is at the end moving to a random position between min and max position. Let's call the max position 5000 millimeters. So our distances and, 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 and dimensions in real virtual are always millimeters. And let's make it uh, as maybe 500 millimeters a second. Uh, so it will drive in a random way between zero and 5000 with a speed of 500. And let's do the same here for the drive going up and down. We are adding this drive erratic. Same here, we could use here drive, drive erratic position. And maybe let's take it three meters and maybe thousand millimeters per second. So let's start it now. Um, and we'll directly see that our thing will move. Okay, it's moving too far down, but we already created our first small simulation mo model. Uther, we can use here the acceleration. Let's put in here acceleration of 400. It's already in for both components. And by the way, by selecting both components, you could change the acceleration in parallel for all the components which you are having marked. So I'm starting it once again and we now see a smoother acceleration on the beginning of the movements. Maybe you don't like the colors which are in here in this model and within our project folder under game for automation, 3D prefabs and materials. We are having some additional materials. So I could take here the plastic blue, for example, and just drag it on the component, which I would like to have in blue, the black maybe for this bottom component and the aluminum brushed for this components here. Okay, and once again, it looks like that now in game mode. What I'm usually doing for working in parallel, because it's automatically always opening the game window uh, when pushing on play and very often I would like to continue seeing it in scene view. I'm taking this and putting it down here because testing is also possible in scene view. And um, the overlay window, which is here, could be, if I'm in, with function one turned on and off. And there's a kind of override for the speeds. So I can make the speed four times faster. So that's a generic speed override. The time is still running in, in, in the same uh, speed. So I'm overriding the speed, but on the physics simulation time, nothing is changing. But I'm also able to override the time scale. So to make a four times faster physics or a slower physics simulation, and then it's running very slow. So for testing, you can change the speeds here. You always see the drives which are which are currently running. Another way for testing it is 
each component has this um, active option each game real virtual component and i could t make this not active by putting it to never this erratic position component so both are not active so when i'm starting now nothing will move because the controlling component isn't giving any signals but i'm able to move the drives here uh, with these buttons uh, in the overlay menu or maybe making it faster by overriding the speed. There's one more thing to add uh, which is most important for a bigger model. You see here on the inspector side on the top right edge we are having this static property. And by st setting the static property, we are saying that this component won't move, which is enabling Unity to pre-calculate uh, much more things and that has a high impact on bigger models. So it's a good practice to first, yes, change children, set everything to the static and later on to make the moving component to non-static. That's it for this tutorial. We created our first own simulation model by importing a Koyada file from 3D Find It. And we added two drives to it by also changing the kinematic structure in the design structure itself. Next time I will show you, based on this example, how you could add uh, your own kinematic structure without changing the structure of the imported data itself. That's done by groups and a so-called kinematic component and we will see how to do that next week. Thanks a lot for your attention and I wish you much fun with Real Virtual I.O. Thanks a lot. Bye.